What's Hello. up, guys? <laughs> All right. So um, tonight's going to be interesting for sure. We've got a new setup. We can do this and this. So uh, let us know how you like that. <laughs> let us know if you can hear us all right. Let us know if everything's good. Um, and yeah, let's give a shout out real quick to our epic moderators. Uh, I think Bryce and JC are here tonight. So they're going to be helping us uh, if anybody gets too rowdy. So yeah. this is definitely one of those conversations. <laughs> um, so yeah, so uh, we've got some, some good conversation coming up tonight about episode five, season two of The Chosen. And so um, yeah, some interesting things for sure. Yeah. It's it's interesting for sure. It's a little <laughs> scary to be honest. Sure, sure. We don't want to be like the the center of um some sort of uh controversy yeah. or <laughs> or an attack on our channel or anything. Right. Uh but it should be very interesting kind of talking about this topic. And so um we're talking about a few things. We'll start with the lighter stuff and then we'll get into the final uh one of the final scenes of episode 5 which you all know what we're talking about uh it's when Jesus is preparing his sermon and is that a viable thing is it not a viable thing um you know kind of talking about both sides of that issue and so really our heart is just to talk about different things like this and the, yeah. one of the things that i love most about the chosen is just how it gets you to think in the first place and right. so um as we're talking tonight um you know let's just have a good heart have everybody uh, love on one another and as we see some good stuff in the chat, we'll definitely point it out like this right here. <laughs> Alicio, hey, thank you so much for a super sticker. That reminds me, if you guys do want to hang out with us and um, and and give a, uh, you know, help us to basically make this channel better and do more things like this, <laughs> <laughs> um, then, uh, then uh, that's really going to help us out to do that. Um, there's a couple ways that you guys can help us out uh, monetarily. You can you can hit that little uh, dollar sign button uh, down near the chat over there, and you can give us um, a donation there. You can also join us over on Patreon or brand new thing just today. We actually just started YouTube memberships. And so if you guys want extra perks, extra videos and different stuff like that, um, then you can actually join as a member on the channel. You'll get extra uh, emojis for the chat. You'll get a little uh, uh, signifying um, kind of icon next to your name that will show other people that you're a member and that uh, you support us. We'll see so, how many people get it. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> It'll take a while. Your, your, your little icon will actually evolve over time. So the longer that you're a member, um, the cooler your icon will get. So anyway, um, very cool. We're going to look at a few different scenes tonight. And so, first of all, we're going to start out with the scene where Jesus is talking with his cousin, John the Baptist. And we're going to kind of break that down and then pray. and then talk about it. Yeah, I, yeah, I said that we we're going to pray first and I totally <laughs> forgot. So, uh, hey, guys, real quick, we're going to pray before we get started. This is something that, again, we want to have the right words to say. We want to have, you know, make sure that you guys are in the right frame of mind as well. And so, um, you know, you want to pray? Jesus first, for sure. Huh? You want to pray us in? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> sure. All right. Vanessa um, is going to pray for us. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much um, just for everything that you do for the chosen, for, for it getting us to look into um, your word, to dig deeper into your word and to love it, to fall deeper and deeper in love with it because your, old, your word is the ultimate source of everything the ultimate source of truth lord um so i pray that we can go into this with open minds and open hearts and and not in a combative manner at all because we don't know everything you know everything and you are the truth lord um so i just pray that we have a fun time just um looking at the chosen and the story but also to to maybe if we can learn something um regarding your scripture and your word lord in jesus name i pray Amen, for Amen. sure. Um, so yeah, like I said, first of all, we're going to talk about uh, the scene between John the Baptist and um, Jesus. So let's uh, let's take a look at this. Oh, did I lose my screen? All right. <laughs> we'll get there in just a second. All right, here we go. Let me know if you can hear. Actually, I know you won't, you won't be able to hear. I made this mistake last time, guys. Let's try this one more time. What is happening? All right, I'm going to go through some of the. Yeah, go ahead. Just going to say hi to people. Hey, Ashley, what's <laughs> up? Thank you for being here. Sorry, guys. I've got to fix this. Real Silencio, fast. you're always there, dude. <laughs> oh, thanks. Or girl. Or girl, dudette. Um, hey, guys, Epic Moderator. <laughs> Fellow Epic Moderator. Wait, JC Madden, what is this? True, true. <laughs> Very accurate. 
we're doing great, Darbenia. Thanks. I hope you're doing great <laughs> as well. Um, what yeah, we're else? Doing really good. All right. I think I got right. this one. Here it goes. <laughs> In just a second. Oh. In a second. <laughs> All right. Tech geniuses over here. Mm. All right. Now. We're going to watch this scene. Uh, let us know if you have audio. Let us know if everything's going all right. All right. Here we go. It is right there in the book of Moses. If a man takes his brother's wife, it is impurity. He has uncovered his brother's nakedness. And they shall be childless. I understand this against the law of Moses, but I'm here for bigger purposes than the breaking of rules. You minimize incest? Of course not. What if the laws of Moses will be minimized? All of this will be addressed. I'm not ready to get into the specifics. You appear to be not ready to get into the specifics of a lot of things. For instance, stay on topic. The romantic lives of rulers and kings has been and always will be of enormous fascination to people. It was covered at length in Torah. I don't see why you feel the need to focus on He's it now. He's a client king or tetrarch or whatever. He's one of us. He's unlawful. I am not afraid of him. He may not be as bad as his father, but he is still bad. I'm going to march straight into his court and I'm going to tell him to his face. My followers will love it. You do know how that's going to end, don't you? I get arrested all the time. It's what radicals do. I'll be fine. Herod is afraid of me. The people hold me to be a prophet. Some say Elijah himself. <laughs> well, maybe not the Elijah, but we both know of the Elijahness of your role. Do we? Because I'm beginning to wonder why you're taking this so slow. Why you're always running away after performing miracles. Tell me, why do you always go off to these desolate places? I need solitude. I'm working on something. A sermon. A big one. Oh. You're the planning type. Hmm. I always say the first thing that comes to my mind. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going to pause a little bit between this scene just to make sure that we can um, kind of get everything and not forget all the pieces. Right. So, so yeah. I I really love how he says, um, say something about that first. <laughs> oh, I just want to shout out these super chats and super stickers real fast. So thank you so much, uh, C. Delaney. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Really, really appreciate you guys checking out our stuff. Um, really Absolutely. means a lot to us. So, And then Jules, I had a conversation with you earlier. Uh, I don't know if it was a couple of days ago or yesterday or whatever. I talked to a lot of people on our channel, which has been <laughs> amazing. So Jules, thank you so much for being here and um, and hanging out with us. Awesome. Yeah. So I absolutely love how he says, like, I need solitude. I get away to these places because I need to have, like, uh, I already forgot what he said. Does he, like, but it's scriptural that he goes away to desolate places to commune with God, um, the Father. Um yeah. Which I think is super important for the scenes to come, you know, like God would go to uh, Jesus would go to God, mm -hmm. the father for approval, you know, like it wasn't like he did whatever that he wanted. He wanted God to work. What do you think? Yeah, I, I wouldn't break it down that far. I would just say like the relationship here is really in, in interesting to me because like we know that John is Jesus's cousin. We don't know the type of relationship that they had. And so what we do know is that John was pretty much in the desert um, from when he was a kid. And um, beyond that, like, we don't really know, uh, <laughs> you know, what was kind of going on uh, with him. A lot of people think that he might have been part of the Essenes, which is a group that was kind of out in Qumran, which is where they found the Dead Sea Scrolls. And so um, it's possible that John could have grown up there uh, as an Essene or as a, a part of a group just like that. It's very likely that that actually happened. Um, but at one point, he either left the group or was kicked out of the group and became kind of a radical on his own uh, because they didn't believe his ideas sort of thing. Um, and so it's, it's quite interesting to think of like this relationship, right. Between Jesus and John the Baptist and how they would talk to each other. Yeah. And uh, like, so just from a story point of view, like, like not talking about scripture at all, right. Just from a story point of view, this scene was probably the most interesting scene for me mm -hmm. because here we see for the first time in the show, someone who is talking to Jesus and not, um, 
I, I want to be careful with my words here, but um, someone who is not um, just like sitting and and like reacting to Jesus. He felt like family, like he is family. Yeah, he felt like he was a lot more comfortable talking to Jesus than everybody else because everybody else feels like they're kind of on eggshells. Mm -hmm. We see Peter trying to talk to uh, talk to Jesus and he's kind of walking, you know, like tippy toeing like around. Uh, you know, these different things and talking about, um, you know, hey, are we going here because of this? Like, what is going on here? And kind of talking to Jesus, trying to get answers from him. And John here, it's the first time that we really see someone talking to Jesus as if they know him. Mm -hmm. And so that was a really interesting kind of relationship point here. Mm -hmm. um, but what is the big deal with John, right? In this episode, he's trying to basically talk with um, Herodias, right? And 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 we know through the scriptures that that's how John dies, mm -hmm. is because he is criticizing this this king right. um, that he has married his brother's ex wife, mm -hmm. and so it, in his mind, in Jewish law, it's kind of like this incestuous type of thing. Um, thank you so much again, Cedar Lenny. Thank <laughs> you so much. Um, and um, and so we are like in this position, like as viewers, right. Where we know that John is, is going to die. We know that. And in fact, after this episode, we may not see John again mm -hmm. before he dies. There's a possibility that we might get a couple scenes with him. Um, but to be honest, like we see as Jesus is like crying and we'll talk about that scene again in, in just a second. But in this scene, John is kind of setting that up, right. That he's, he's going to go talk to this uh, tetriarch this King. Right. And, and be able to basically criticize him and tell him, Hey, like mm -hmm. <laughs> what you're doing is not okay. Um, because he, he basically is part of what John considers the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And so it's, it's definitely, um, an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Do you want to go through any of the, uh, comments? There's a few sure. questions. Okay. Yeah. What are we looking at? Um, one that was interesting was I have I enjoyed having uh, Dallas on your last video. What was your favorite part about it? Oh man, that was crazy. <laughs> just it happening. Um, yeah, just it happening for <laughs> sure. Those of you who haven't seen it on our channel, you can go check out. We did a live stream last Sunday night, right after the uh, the new episode aired, mm -hmm. and um, it was super super cool. Dallas was you know he had just finished his live stream with the chosen and done all of this work, um, and then um, after his live stream was over, he was just on his on his computer looking at different YouTube stuff, and he saw our live stream. And we had talked to Dallas a little bit before, um, and he um, you know he's checked out a couple of our videos and stuff, which is uh, that's crazy Insane. to me, yeah. super super cool. But he actually got on our live stream last week and, and chatted with us. So if you guys want to see his perspective of this episode and a little bit of kind of like the first reactions that we had, mm -hmm. um, you guys can can watch that episode. Yeah. There was more, but it, it goes fast, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else that you want to bring up? All right. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Jules. Yeah, next time you can send a message with that uh, with that super chat and we can we can put it up too. So thank you so much. Um, okay, Dallas said that John the Baptist would be in season three. Okay, cool. I didn't catch that. Um, so very cool. Uh, maybe we'll see some of those scenes where he's actually going to be killed uh interesting we'll see uh for sure so all right you want to continue the scene or anything else you want to say before we continue no that's it cool all right let us uh continue on with this scene in preaching and in life yes i remember from the time you started talking and i heard about that brood of vipers comment that was classy do you know how the poets say vipers are born? Yes, they hatch inside their mothers and eat their way out, killing their mothers in the process. I thought it was a pretty good line. Yes, but no one wants to be accused of killing their ima. Yeah, well, I'm not here to make friends with religious leaders. And judging by that stunt you pulled on the Sabbath, neither are you. Are you really going to be nice to these people? I suppose not. Just be careful. Now is not the time to be careful. 30 years you've been here. 
David was a shepherd and in the wilderness and on the run for 30 years before he became king. Yes, and then he ruled for 40 years. He killed a bunch of people, made horrible mistakes, and then he died in bed with a teenager he was not married to. Maybe not the best analogy, but also she was there to keep him warm. I know, Everyone knows. I know, I, I know what you mean. But what I'm saying is taking all this time, telling all these stories, I must confess I'm eager for you to get to the point. Look, I'm going to tell stories that make sense to some people, but not to others. And that's just how it's going to be. I get it. It's not like I'm preaching stories for children either. It's becoming real, isn't it? Everything we've prepared for. It is. I mean, it's always been real, but it's one thing to preach about it. To hear my Abba's prophecy growing up and your Ima's song. Hmm. But it's heavy when it becomes real, no? Do you feel ready? I'm always ready to do my father's will. But that doesn't make it easy. Listen, I was rude to you before, but it's only because we go back so far and I can tease a bit. But you know that my heart is yours. My life is yours. The sole reason why I was miraculously conceived by two old people was to pave the way for you. I'm just impatient for you to get to work. I understand. And I'm grateful for your part. You have done God's work, albeit in a uh, unique way. <laughs> Guilty as charged. <laughs> yeah. It's perhaps a poor choice of words. Perhaps. <laughs> All righty. So interesting scene. I really do love that scene. Um, I think it's it's definitely super interesting. Um, yeah, if you guys want to post questions, just you can post them right here, and uh, and we'll try to pull them up as we go. I told them to um, to put a cue before. Yeah, go ahead and put a cue before, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, Max. Um, if you can just hold on. Um, I don't know much about this, um, but maybe I'll explain some of that here. So touching scene. Yeah, I think so as well. Um, yeah. So. Um, John the Baptist, super interesting character for sure, from his growing up to to everything else, right? We see this in um, in Luke one at the very end, Luke one eighty, um, and and some of that story of of John the Baptist's birth and and everything that happened there. Um, it's super interesting to see the the dichotomy, especially in Luke, um, of how Jesus and John the Baptist are are linked, right? John the Baptist as the herald of Christ. And then Jesus as the Christ and, and coming in there and them walking together through this. Now, we don't actually know if they had any interaction at all as adults um, or as children. <laughs> we, like, we don't know. The only thing that we know when they when they met from Scripture is when they were still in the womb. And um, and so it's it's definitely um, an interesting kind of relationship that Dallas decided to put in here. Um, but I, I, I do want to talk about kind of um, Jesus's reluctance to allow John to do what he needs to do here. Um, it's kind of interesting to me because we know that Christ knows what's going to happen. That's why he's so sad later. And we're going to watch that scene in just a second. But um, I, I, to me, this reminds me a lot of like the garden of Gethsemane mm. and, and how Jesus is literally asking God if there is any other way, mm -hmm. you know, and he is so passionate and he is so um, like, he's literally sweating so much that, that, 
that he it, it's like blood, right? Some people believe that he was actually sweating blood. Some people believe that it was so thick, his sweat was so thick that it was like blood. But for for here, um, uh, it's almost as if Jesus, the human side of him, is like, I love my cousin, I don't want him to go. And so for me, that I think that's why it made this scene so uh, so sad for me, and then the later scene too, because Jesus knows what needs to happen, he knows what's going to happen, but at the same time, like maybe there's a part of his humanness that's like, I don't want my family to die, Mm -hmm. you know? And so, um, I don't know. I don't know if that's right. I don't know if if that's even what Dallas meant to do there. Mm -hmm. Um, But from my perspective, I think it's definitely an interesting um, thing. So you have anything to say about that? Yeah, no, not really. (laughs) Um, I agree with you. Okay. All right, cool. Well, let's move on. We'll continue on. Anything you guys like about uh, John the Baptist? Um, yeah. Becoming real, isn't it? Durbania. One of my favorite lines, the weight of glory. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't I can't even imagine how Jesus felt growing up. I mean, I think back to season one, episode five, where we see as he's a child, right? And he asks his mother, if not now, when, you know? And how real that must have made it to her at that time. And we talked about that in one of our other episodes, too, if you want to check that out. But, um, yeah, man, it, it must have been so, so hard um, for everyone involved in the situation, right? From Joseph to Mary to, to like, Jesus understanding what he had to do and everything else and understanding how, you know, I don't know, just everything in that situation. His disciples understanding him, period, understanding that he's the son of God, that all of this has such a weight to it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, can't I, I like this question because I have it too. Uh, do you think John the Baptist uh, expects Jesus to be a warrior King? Like all the Jews expected. What do you think? I don't know. I don't know if he had more insight, if God had given him a different vision, that was definitely the, the common, um, the viewpoint. common thought, the common yeah. viewpoint of the Jews during yeah. the day. But again, John might have been part of the Essenes. And so if he was part of the Essenes or, or, or a group like that um, and he was kicked out, maybe that's why. Maybe he had different ideas than than what the traditional Jewish beliefs were. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, great question so far. Wasn't Mary related to John's mother? And if family, they probably traveled together to Jerusalem to attend the festivals. It's possible for sure. But it, it does say in scripture that John kind of grew up in the wilderness. And so he could have been put into an Essene community in Qumran or an area like that um, from a very young age. Right. And maybe she kind of like brought him up to the point where he could go to that community. Mm-hmm. We don't know. And that's <laughs> that's really going to be, uh, if you guys saw my thumbnail, I saw some people asking questions about it earlier about the thumbnail to this video. And it says, did you just prepare his sermons? And um, and in the bubble, it says, I don't know. That's going to be a theme tonight. So yeah. So just to be clear, um, we're not experts and we're not God. <laughs> and yeah. so, you know, we don't know. There's a lot of answers that we do not have. And I so think, I think as Christians, we, sh- we, we could be OK with being transparent and being able to say we don't know, because I feel like that's that's more attainable to people that maybe are seeking for for the truth um, and being able to say, I don't know, I'll find that out for you. That's so helpful when it comes to like evangelism and apologetics and stuff. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, if you guys are ready, let's move on to the next scene. We're going to look at the scene where Jesus says goodbye to John the Baptist and talk about kind of the, um, really the story here of, of what this looks like. So let me pull this up real fast and we'll get to that. So throughout the rest of the scene, we saw as um, uh, Mary begins her, uh, basically her relapse is what we're calling it. And the only reason why I use that word, I saw someone else comment this before. The only reason why I'm using that word is because when we had Dallas on the live stream, that's the word that he used. And so um, so that's how I'm kind of clarifying it. Um, but yeah, Mary, uh, we just did a video about that. So if you want to check that out, our last video was actually just about that. And kind of understanding that there's a lot of really cool kind of hidden things. If you listen super closely to the scene of Rama and Mary, you can actually hear the dialogue of Thomas and Matthew kind of overlaid underneath it, hmm. if that makes sense. Um, it's it's really interesting. I thought it was a mistake at first. I thought there was like, I thought literally the director and the, 
the cinematography guys were like giving giving cues and you could hear it in the audio but then i listened to it over and over again i could hear the underlying audio underneath it's so interesting so yeah um really I, cool <laughs> yeah it's just when it like, comes to, like cinematography like yeah, yeah yeah what did i just say so much <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. Yeah, I think it's interesting how he allowed John the Baptist to continue his ministry, even though he knew the outcome. Well, he had to, right? This was John's, this was John's mission. I mean, just like Jesus, right? Like John was on a path, and and just like we're about to watch in this scene, uh, well, let's watch, let's just watch this scene, and then we'll get into that some more. So, all right, here we go. So you're really going for it. You know I can't be silent. I know. Soon I will break my own silence as well. Soon? Mm -hmm. Such a strange word, soon. It could mean anything. I love you. <sighs> Thank you for letting me see that. I heard about the miracles, but I never thought I'd actually get to see one. Well, timing is everything, I guess. And John, what you are about to do? I've lived my whole life with warnings. Warnings are how I know I'm on the right track. It's not a warning. You're doing what you're supposed to do. I'm just reminding you to be sure to listen to God's voice as you do it. Always. Atticus Amelius. Also <laughs> one of my favorite characters right there. Uh, we'll kind of leave this up small so you guys can see it. Um, let's go back here. But then I'm blocked. Are you blocked? I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, I won't do that then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. Um, no, I think John had the Holy Spirit. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about that scripturally. Um, but I also don't know because I'm not God. So I love the emotion on Jesus's face yes. in this scene. That's exactly Seriously, what I was saying. So yeah. Jonathan Rumi has been doing an amazing job um, overall. Um, you know, I did have a conversation earlier in the week. Let's kind of sidetrack to this real fast and then we'll come back to our main topic. But, you know, I had a conversation earlier this week or last week um, talking with someone who, um, you know, asked if it's all right if they pray to Jesus, if they imagine Jonathan Rumi's face. And um, my response was like, you have to be extremely careful in this realm um, because Jonathan Rumi is going to encounter some amazing things from playing the role of Jesus. And he's also going to encounter some really, really hard things um, from playing the role of Jesus. And um, I think he's going to, he's going to see people that, that literally see him as Jesus. And that's going to be a big problem, uh, not only for them, but for him as well. And um yeah, I, I won't say too much about that. I'm sure that we'll do an episode about that in the future. But man, this is this is going to be a really hard thing, I think, for him in the future. Um, and I think that he is sacrificing something in order to play this part. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, anyway, let's talk about this scene. There are a few things that um, are super, super interesting here. First of all, we see Jesus say, "We I love you to John the Baptist. I don't think there's a recorded uh, point in the Bible when Jesus actually says, I love you. And so I, uh, it's interesting to kind of, feel that from him. Mm -hmm. Um, I, we know that he loves us and we know that, you know, he, he walks with us in that way, but, um, man, um, super, super interesting to see that relationship and how he's really, really hurting for John. You know yeah. This here? comment is almost saying what you just said. And how awesome is it that the creator of everything hugging you and saying he loves you, that that's what Jesus did for all of us on, on the cross. Yeah. I mean, even, even more so, right. Way more. So, um, <clears throat> definitely super interesting to see, 
yeah, to see that point of view. But something that, that John says is super interesting here that we're, we're going to see in future episodes, I guarantee it, if we do see more episodes of John the Baptist, is he says, you know, I've heard about all your miracles, but I've never actually seen one. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, um, you know, something about timing. Like, basically, you've just had the wrong timing or, you know, just the timing wasn't right or whatever. And I think this is going to catch up to us because John the Baptist, you know, when he's in prison, um, he eventually sends his students to go ask Jesus, hey, are you are you actually the Messiah? Yeah. <laughs> um, and of course, Jesus is. And, and you know, he says the blind hear or the <laughs> the blind see the yeah. deaf hear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and kind of like reassuring him. Yes, I am. But I think that we'll see this again with with John where he's um, he's definitely. Um, he's going to start to doubt at some points, just mm -hmm. like all of us do. And how insane is it that the cousin of Jesus would start to doubt? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's crazy for sure. But here <laughs> we see definitely the human side of, of, um, of Jesus. Like he is again, like he's accepting of this idea, obviously, like he knows what John has to do. And he even says like, yeah, you're going to what you're going to do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. um, but, you can also see the sadness and the, the, the sorrow that he has for him. Mm -hmm. um, Cause we know that he's not going to see him again. You know, even if we see John later on, Jesus is not going to see him again Yeah. Um, on earth. Right. Yeah. I'm just smiling because this is one of my favorite parts too. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> just randomly. Everything's yeah. quiet and, and serious. And then, yeah, I think um, that was a very nice touch to the episode. It's definitely <laughs> super, super funny. Helped to break up like the, the scariness. I know yeah. a lot of people like definitely felt scared for parts of this episode. So yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely an interesting part for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's kind of get into the meat of what we want to talk about, which interestingly enough is the shortest part of the episode. Um, the fact that Jesus knew everything portrayed beautifully uh, in this scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I think you're right about that, Sue. I agree. The Holy Spirit upon uh, fell upon John when Mary visited Elizabeth. He leapt for joy. Possibly, yeah. No, that's not possibly. That is. I know the Holy Spirit like went onto them, right? But yeah. Did it? Was it implanted in the John? That's the question. Oh, I see. I, I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't think it's extremely clear about that. Um. Yep. Yeah. All right. So let's jump into the last scene, uh, the most controversial of all the scenes, um, <laughs> and let's talk about Jesus preparing his sermon. Um, we're going to talk about two different sides, and I'll let you know those of you who wanted to argue or wanted to watch us, you know, come to a conclusion on either side. We're I doubt you're going to, I doubt you're going to see that today. <laughs> so uh, we're going to talk about the two different sides. We're going to talk about what Dallas thinks and what we talked to him about. Um, and then we're going to move on from there. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll take some questions for you guys. So if you do have a question, please write a Q and then maybe a colon and then your question. Okay. So we can see it. Um, yeah, for sure. Raquel, love all the content. Of course. Uh, we're just going to keep on giving it for sure. Yeah. Um, hi, Snipe Life. Hello. <laughs> glad to see you again um uh really glad you're here all right cool let us get into the third scene uh it's only like 10 seconds maybe uh maybe not even so uh let's jump into it and uh here it is it doesn't do what it, it, it no. if salt has lost its flavor it's salty taste it's Bye-bye. Dun, dun, dun. Can I say my immediate thoughts when I when we watched it? Sure, yeah. My immediate thoughts were cringy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, would that really happen? Sure, yeah. But now get into the two school of thoughts. So... Uh, Okay, so uh, most controversial 10 seconds, yes. And Dallas has obviously done so much, uh, you know, damage control yeah. um, kind of from his point of point of stuff. Um, and, uh, and I know that a lot of you are going to have a, a lot of different um, kind of ideas here. Yeah. But I think that there are two, two pretty good explanations for what this could be. And, uh, it, it, and, you know, if not, then you can, you can keep on being mad and that's fine too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you do you for sure. Um, and so 
you know, Dallas kind of talks about it this way. So let's talk about this side first. Uh, Dallas's school of thought is that Jesus set his godliness aside as nothing to be clung to, right? We see this in Philippians, uh, Philippians two. And so, um, Jesus is doing all of these things through the father, Mm -hmm. not of his own strength. And so as Jesus is praying with the father, the father is giving him answers. Right. And even though Jesus, the father may speak to Jesus, right. And give him like, I don't know, I don't want to use this word because it has so much baggage, but maybe like a word of knowledge or something like that um, has a lot of baggage. I don't really want to use that word, but, um, you know, the father may explain something to him in the moment, right. Just like he does whenever he knows what someone is thinking or, um, or just as he does when, um, you know, he's giving these parables and different things, uh, throughout, or when he's speaking to the Pharisees or whatever else it may be. Dallas's opinion is that, um, you know, Jesus was fully man and fully God. Yes. Um, but that, you know, he didn't know the location of every single rock, um, you know, and so uh, like when he gets hurt in episode three of season one, um, you know, maybe he tripped or maybe he hit a twig that he didn't know was there and he he begins to bleed, right? Mm-hmm. Um, now, I, I, a lot of people are really, really upset at this because they believe that um, that Jesus knew everything at all times, that he was, um, you know, fully omniscient even when he was here on earth. And that um, basically, you know, he was fully God as he was on earth. Um, uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me bring this up. Durbania, uh, thanks for putting this in here. So Philippians 2, he emptied himself, humbled himself. We don't know what it was uh, like being fully God, fully man. I think it was possible he practiced. uh, He's still sinless. Yeah. And it's not just that, like in, like he, he said it's in the scriptures that he went away. You know, mm-hmm. several times. Mm-hmm. And like we said, we, we don't stand anywhere. But in my yeah. opinion, like, like, I'm not going to die over this. You know, this yeah. is a show first and foremost. We it's not scripture. Um, So that's my that's kind of my take, I guess, is like it doesn't matter if it's either or because we don't know. But um, he does go away in solitude to talk to God. So who's to say that he's not talking to God right now? Um, The father. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we don't know the the full context, right? And mm-hmm. so um, I'm just taking what what, what um, you know Dallas said and and kind of going from there. And so, <laughs> yeah, controversial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit, but um, yeah. So from Dallas's point of view, um, you know, he sees that Jesus would not have sinned, right? But that doesn't mean that he wouldn't have prepared something like this, or that he wouldn't have. Um, you know, thought through a sermon like this. Um, and so, yeah, that's pretty much where he, where he stands. And, and he uses things like, um, you know, um, he used two examples. One, I'm not sure I a hundred percent agree with, but he used, um, you know, God, Oh God, why have you forsaken me as one of the examples? And what was the other example he used? Do you remember? It was that Luke, um yeah luke 152 which is uh he grew in 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 stature wisdom stature, uh, yeah. wisdom and stature and so if jesus can grow in wisdom and stature then he must have learned something right my question would be to um to people in this camp is like um i guess where does that line be where's that line drawn you know mm-hmm. um where is the line drawn of jesus not knowing or like you know not understanding certain certain things or having to work through certain things. Mm -hmm. Uh, But then, you know, the the other side, I can ask the same question. Where is that line drawn um, where, where Jesus's godliness, you know, is there? Does that mean that Jesus can bench press 2000 pounds if he, if he wanted to? Mm -hmm. Um, Does that mean that, you know, you know, there's, there's a bunch of different questions. I think that one person who has a really good video on this is actually Mike Winger. I think who um, Dallas has actually talked about in some of his live streams as well. Mm-hmm. Um, he does a really good job of kind of explaining that. And so, um, and so, yeah, it, the other side of things too, though, I think is, um, you know, I think about it this way. So let's pretend that we know for a fact that Jesus knew everything. He could tell you where every single stone was. He, he, he walked, as fully God, you know, with all the omniscience and everything on earth, right? Um, are you saying that Jesus couldn't have prepared a sermon or didn't want to pre- prepare a sermon, right? What if Jesus just wanted to? Mm. I mean, he's the creator, right? 
does that mean that his creation is lacking in time and effort or I don't know, like God, God, when I create, right, it's, it's a fulfilling process for me to go through the process of creating. And so we're going to get to your questions soon. I know we have a lot of people chatting right now. We're going to go back and look at a lot of these, but let me just kind of finish my thoughts first and then we'll chat through everything. So what if Jesus just wanted to create? So even if he's, you know, all powerful, can do anything at any time, he's omniscient in every single way. What if he just wanted to, um, could you accept that? Uh, I don't know. And so the, again, these things I'm just bringing up, I'm not trying to say that these, this is how you should think. I'm not saying this is how I think I'm just kind of bringing up both sides. And I want to talk to you guys about it because I want to have the conversation. I want to understand where you guys are coming from and, um, and just kind of share that. So, um, I hope you guys understand my heart. I'm not trying to attack anybody. I'm not telling anybody they're wrong or stupid, or they can't believe the way that they want to believe. But in the end of the day, here's the most important thing. Okay. The most important thing is that we cannot say for 100% sure either way because we just don't know. Mm -hmm. We weren't there with Jesus. We didn't interact with him. Um, you know, we know we, we interact with Jesus now, right? Mm -hmm. Like when I was worshiping this morning, like I know that he's standing there next to me. Um, but it's different, right? He's in heaven with the father and, and it's a different type of relationship, right? We have a relationship with Jesus, but it's different. And we're waiting for the second coming of Jesus and all of that. And we're not going to get into all the eschatology and everything with that right now. But um, it's really, really important to understand that, you know, we are humans thinking in human thought and we cannot have all the answers. It's just, it's just impossible. And so as we kind of talk through this, you know, have that point, have that, uh, you know, that kind of mindset as we go through this. Um, and then secondarily, the show, The Chosen, what is its purpose? Its purpose is one, to spread the love and the good news, right, of Jesus. And to understand that he is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and he is the only thing that can save your soul, right? Number two, it's to get you to read scripture, hmm. okay? So what does this do? If it made you mad, did it make you go and read any scripture? Then the goal of the chosen was, was successful, Okay. It's to, it's to send you to that scripture and to get you to read your Bible, to get you to get into the word and to really dig deep into what it has to say. Mm -hmm. And third, um, it's just to tell an amazing story so that you can remember the disciples, so that you can remember the stories of Jesus. And again, these things, these three things have to go hand in hand. We have to know the good news. We have to read our Bible. And then we have to take in this good story, right? So that we can understand, so that we can have a better remembrance of everything that happened. And so if we're lacking any of those things, right, if we're lacking the scripture piece, uh, then then the story piece is just going to be something that's faulty because you're going to go to someone and you're going to start quoting scripture from the chosen, which is wrong, right? The yeah. chosen is not scripture. No. Dallas has said this many, 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 many times, right? We say it every single video. There's a big difference between story and scripture. And whenever you 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 mess that up, right, whenever you you put those things in the wrong place, you are going to have a, a bad time. It's going to, it's going to make you have a misunderstanding of either scripture or the story or both. And when you have a misunderstanding of scripture, it's going to hurt you in, in your walk. And when you're, when you're sharing things with people um, and, and just your, your relationship with Jesus in general, right? Because you're going to have a skewed idea of what that scripture is. And so, all right, I'll, I'll get off my soapbox <laughs> and I want to talk about this with you guys. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to scroll back. If you have any questions, please leave a Q, a colon, and then, uh, and then leave a question in there um, so that we can see that. Okay. Um, awesome. Let's give a shout out real quick to our awesome mods here. Um, Bryce and JC we've got tonight and um, yeah. Awesome. 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 What father hasn't helped his child with homework? God is a good father. I can definitely see this point of view for sure. Mm -hmm. um, seeing as, as God, um, you know, obviously was working through Jesus through this time. Um, the interesting thing to me that Dallas put it this way is he finds it more impactful if Jesus were to, to fully put away his Godhood and lean completely on the father. Right. It means that like that, uh, basically like that Jesus was human, right? 
and in this and in this form um you know he did have to go through all the things that we go through temptation and and hardships and being sore and tired and all of that right but he still did all of that with the same limitations that we have just leaning on the father just like we can right and so it makes it a completely different uh feeling when we think about it that way and i think that's why dallas holds so tightly to that and i don't want to i, I want to say this too real fast i don't want to speak for dallas um, I am not, you know, uh, in communication with him all the time. Um, and he was just on a, one live stream with us, you right. know, and, and we saw his live stream as he explained these situations. And, and we so watched I'm just the behind to, the scenes. That's that's all we have for context. Right. And I'm so I'm just trying to communicate what he has communicated. And if I've gotten something wrong, I'm totally sorry. That's not that's not my intention at all. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah, we talked about this a little bit, Trey. Uh, when when John the Baptist was in prison and sent his disciples to Jesus to inquire if Jesus really was the Messiah, could it could it be John? Um, could it? What? Yeah, be John was not doubting Jesus' identity or was doubting. Uh, I'm not exactly clarify sure what you mean that, by that, please. Yeah, clarify <laughs> that, Trey. Um, I think that it, it was him doubting Jesus' identity at least for a moment, and and this isn't a horrible thing, right? We all do this. We all doubt Jesus. We all doubt God because we are imperfect people. Mm -hmm. And whenever something bad happens in our life, we blame God. Or something Why? doesn't go our way. Or something doesn't go our way, right? Because we know that God's in control. Mm -hmm. And in our minds, we're like, well, if God wasn't, if God isn't doing good things for me, then maybe he's not the God that I thought he was, right? Mm. Um, and something that we sang this morning, we sing the song, um, Nothing Else by Pat Barrett. And um, one of the things that came to my mind during practice this morning was just like, man, <laughs> Jesus does not owe us anything, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you can look for something else if you want to pull it up. Jesus doesn't owe us anything, right? And we know that song. Um, it's an amazing song, but it goes, the, the verses go like this. And I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I just sing another song. So take me back to where we started. I'll open up my heart to you, right? Um, and uh, the, 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 the chorus of the song goes, I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. And I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you don't owe me anything. And more than anything that you can do, I just want you, right? And so I love that song because it, it's an understanding of if God had done nothing for us in our lives, right? If God never gave us a dime, never blessed us with anything, just filled us with disease and despair, right? He would still be worthy. He would still be good enough. And what he has given us is still more than we deserve, right? Because he let his son die on the cross for us and gave us an understanding that it doesn't matter what goes on in this earth right now because Jesus died on the cross for us. And without that happening, we would have no hope. There would be absolutely nothing that we could do. And so having him here and still blessing us, still loving on us, like what else could I want? but to just have God, to just have Jesus and to just have the understanding that there is a hope at the end of the tunnel. So, yeah, I just, I definitely get that, 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 that people, we, we, would, we doubt all the time. Right. And we are not perfect. And I could definitely see John doubting here. Absolutely. Anything you want to pull up? Um. There's a lot of questions. I mean, there's some. Uh, there's a few questions that, um, I don't know. I guess my thing is, um, we shouldn't fight each other over this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Should we talk about the bag tonight? Yeah. Talk about the bag. Okay. So, um, okay. <laughs> I see a lot of a lot of stuff here. So, uh, yeah. Go through that if you want, and then you hit it on the bag. 
Yep. So I definitely agree with Germania here. It's a mystery. Fully God, fully man. I'm not seeing uh, this show go against scripture at all. I definitely agree. I don't think that the show is going against any scripture. Uh, I think that we we don't have a full picture. Um, I'm seeing them explore these big questions, uh, causing us to explore them. I think that is so true. Yeah. The fact that we are here, right? That we're talking. The fact about that it. we are here talking about scripture, talking about this, is way more important mm. than this 10 to 15 second scene, right? Yeah. And if you didn't like this, Dallas said you're not going to like episode eight. <laughs> <laughs> um, that episode, he said there's going to be 10 plus minutes of of Jesus preparing, and so. Um, what I would say is do one of three things. One, uh, accept Dallas's point of view. Two, accept that Jesus just wanted to prepare. And that even though he has the omniscience of everything, that he just wanted to prepare because that's what he wanted to do. Or three, uh, just you know say that that part of the show you don't like and move on. Yeah, it's just a show. Yeah, it's first, just a show. First and foremost. Um, so we're going to talk about the bag. Okay. So this is, this is the most amount of people I've ever been able, able to explain the bag. To, okay. <laughs> this is amazing. So I'm so happy you guys are all here. So glad you're here to talk about the bag. So the bag, um, it's not your paycheck. Like people say today, I'm going to go get that bag. Um, it is, uh, yeah, I can do that. Um, the, I want you to imagine this. So everything in Christianity, everything in the world, okay. Um, it is out in front of you. And so, you know, there are specific things in Christianity that I will fight to the death for. And that is things like Jesus is fully man and fully God. Jesus is the son of God. He died on a cross for our sins. And because of that, we have access to eternal life. There are things that I will not fight for. And those things go in my bag. These are things that I do have opinions on, just like this episode. I have an opinion here, but I am not willing to talk to you guys about that or to even fight you guys about that because it's not that important to me. Um, and so these things go in my bag. These things, and you might get mad at me for saying some of these things, but I don't care because I'm not going to fight you, okay? <laughs> um, these things are baptism, physical water baptism. Do you need to do that for salvation? I have an opinion on it. I would never fight anybody about it. Two, tongues. I have an opinion about tongues. I would never fight you about tongues because it's not worth it for me. I don't think that it is spiritual gifts in general. Mm, yes, for sure. We can, we can, we can kind of bring those all up. Um, there are other things that I will fight for, right? The sanctity of marriage. I think that's extremely, extremely important. One man, one woman in, in holy matrimony until they die. Right. I think that's extremely important. Um, or other extraneous circumstances that we won't get into today, but, um, yeah, I think that that's extremely important. So this is my bag. These are things that <laughs> um, that I I will never ever fight people on. And even on our YouTube channel, if you comment about something that I'm that I'm not willing to fight about, uh, I just won't respond, or or I'll respond with something that kind of shuts down the conversation. Why? Mm. Because it's not worth it. I don't want to hurt your feelings. I don't want you to hurt my feelings. Or and others. I don't. And I don't want someone to come onto my channel and see this argument, and then get upset at Christians. It's right. not worth it. Because our main goal is to what? Love one another. It says in John 13, 35 that they will know us by how we love one another. So um, no, it's not a Unitarian type of view. It's just loving each other. People will know that we are his disciples by the love that we have for one another. And that's that's it for me. You know? But I was going to do this. Bam! <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Dang it, I missed I missed the opportunity. <laughs> Bam! Dang, epic two camera setup. <laughs> the bag. JC knows about the bag. She's part of our small group. So she knows. She knows that voice. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a worship pastor, so it's uh it's put Ben's on. Where you should be a worship pastor. <laughs> you should be a worship pastor. <laughs> yeah, I was just with Ben this morning at church. So Ben is an amazing drummer. He's super, super good. One of our Such patrons. A good song. Yeah, awesome. Um, yeah, God is good. I love your two camera setup. Thanks, Dominion. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've just started experimenting with live streams a couple weeks ago and um, been trying to improve. Last couple weeks, we've just been using a GoPro kind of one camera setup, but now we've got our cameras going. We may have borrowed some of the church's gear with permission. <laughs> With permission, if any of the pastors are watching, with permission. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so anybody, any questions on these scenes? Anything that you guys want to bring up? Um, 
Preparing could also be for contemplating, which I think God, um, yes, which I think God is looking for us. I don't understand the last part of that, but yes, I, I think so too. I think it's sure. like the point that I was trying to make that maybe he was talking to God. Like it, it's not to say that he was doing this on his own. Of course not. Like I feel like he was. Um, either way, he's communicating with God, the yeah. Father. I feel like I need to clarify that every time. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wow, Shika. That's awesome, Daim, for sure. Yes. <laughs> uh, your ministry is important and appreciated. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. This is something that that we never thought that we would be doing. At least we not right now, we didn't think. We've had ministry ideas. One specific one that is still like my heart. Mm -hmm. But this is how it kind of manifests. Like, I still yeah. feel like this is yeah. that ministry still. So Yeah, our goal was really to have a community. Yes. And now we have an amazing, amazing community. And it's so cool. Like, like I was talking with Jules earlier, like we just had a conversation, you know, I was talking with her about her, her him, her, I'm not sure. Sorry. I think it's her, um, about different stuff. And, um, and just having that conversation was, was huge, mm -hmm. but I don't know where they live. I don't know who they are. Um, there's several different conversations that we've had with people all around. There's one of our, one of our favorite, um, viewers right now is Denise yes. Key, and she's, she's been around. I don't know if she's here tonight, but, Aww. um, Denise, you know, we've had a lot of conversation with her and she's been so encouraging to us, just sending us messages, telling us like, Hey, you're doing a great job. Thank you so much for what you're doing. And, um, and she's just been amazing to, to, you know, talk to and to explain things with and to, to have there with us. And so we thank you guys so much, um, for, for being there with us. This is cool. Just found your channel immediately. Subscribe. You guys are just such a good voice for Christianity. <laughs> Thanks so much. Um, and then he said this. I'm yeah, a worship awesome. pastor myself. <laughs> awesome. Dang. Awesome, Matt. Uh, yeah. Where are you guys from? Let us know in the in the chat. Where are you guys from around the world? I know that we've had people from uh, Kenya and um, and India and Jamaica. Uh, Jamaica. And I think we've had people from China even, uh, which is crazy. Um, and um, can God contemplate? I don't know. Can he, is it enjoyable to create and would it still be enjoyable to create with no, um, thought into it or is it just instant? Mm. I don't know. I, I, that, that's, that's the big question for me. I don't know. I'm not God. I do not think in his ways. Uh, I do not, you know, have his thoughts. And so for me, I don't know. My human mind goes, man, it would be really boring to create something just instantly and it's just there and it's perfect and, and everything's there. I don't have to, you know, work on it. And the Bible kind of talks about God creating us out of clay and that process that, that goes through it. And so for me, it's like, I don't know, man, I, I just don't know. I just don't know. I, I wish I had, I wish I had all the knowledge. Thank you for the Sunday chat. Very blessed time with y'all. Thank you so much, Amy. <laughs> Thank you for coming and hanging out with us. Um, any other questions? Any any other things you wanna you wanna talk about? We got Tennessee in the house, Ocala, Florida. Hey, in the house, Venezuela, living in Mexico, Indiana, India. Awesome. Philippines, I saw earlier. Indiana. We're gonna start an Indiana Snipe Life Club. Dang, it's all your peeps, <laughs> JC. Yeah, JC is actually from Indiana originally. Now she lives here with us in Florida. Um, just the good old cornfields in Ohio. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Yay for Indiana friends. <laughs> <laughs> Deltona. Okay, awesome. Pretty close. Are we going to talk about it being our year old? Oh, yeah, we have to do that. You have to go get this. Ow. Okay, I'll, talk, I'll chat with them. All right, we have one more thing that we're going to talk about. Um, Oh, I got to move it over. Um, one more thing we're going to talk about real fast, but uh, leave any more questions you guys have here. Um, I've got a couple questions for you guys, actually, now that I've got a good amount of you here. Um, I'm going to try to talk to this camera. Boom. Um, yeah, so um, we've got one more thing we're going to talk about. Um, I love your bag idea. That's excellent. We all need to have a bag. What would the world be like if everyone had a bag? Yeah, I agree. I've seen so many people in the last few weeks that, man, my heart just hurts for them. Um, not because of their point of view, not because of what they believe, but because um, I believe that people could just be nicer. <laughs> and that, that, that when you're, you know, when you have the fruit of the, the fruits of the spirit, and you're operating in patience and kindness and goodness and self-control. It doesn't look like hating on people on, on Facebook or, or on YouTube. It doesn't look like uh, yelling at the chosen for something that they did. Um, 
it just doesn't look like that. Even when you disagree, I think that it looks differently. So let's be good. <laughs> let's, let's, you know, uh, walk humbly, love mercy. Um, you know, I, I just think that that's super, super important. <laughs> I love that. Today is Trinity Sunday. Our pastor sarcastically said it's pastor's favorite Sunday because the Trinity is so easy to understand, <laughs> let alone explain. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Jesus' last prayer was unity and last commandment was to love one another. Yes. Question, why didn't Rama let Jesus or the disciples know that she didn't know where Mary went? Maybe she's just a bad friend. <laughs> I think that Mary snuck away um, after the demoniac attack. And well, so, she grabbed her bag and, and walked out. Right. That, there's yeah. that scene. Yeah. So I don't think that anybody knew that she had gone. Obviously, Jesus probably knew. Um, but I don't think that um, anybody knew that she had gone until uh, until later. So question, thoughts on James 1, 13, when Jesus tempted no one should say God is tempting you for God cannot be tempted by evil nor does he tempt anyone I love James a lot uh, so thoughts on James 1 13 when tempted no one should say God is tempting me for God cannot be tempted by evil nor does he tempt anyone yeah I think that the that God allows uh, the devil to tempt you um, I mean we see this very clearly in job um, whenever the devil comes to basically the throne of God and um and I, I'm not 100% sure because this isn't the mindset that I was in tonight. But, um, yeah, I think that if I were to say it quickly to you, I would say that generally my belief is that um, God allows these things to happen. Um, and, and that's because we live in a fallen world um, and because, you know, Satan has some sort of power on the earth. Right. Um, and so, um yeah, we're, we're tempted by these things. And I think part of it's just our human nature of, of being flawed people um, that we fall into stuff ourselves. Sometimes we don't even need to be tempted, right? <laughs> we just fall into stuff because that's who we are. We agree that John had a time of doubt. So I guess that's why I don't understand this controversy over Mary having doubts. Why is everyone so mad about this when even <laughs> John, had, John had them? So I think this the reason why people are so upset about this is because they think in their minds, right? Like, um, Jesus healed her. It's done. It's mm. finished. But also because he says things like go and sin no more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But what about us? Yeah. Right. He tells us the same. Doesn't he tell us the same? <laughs> Don't we have the Holy spirit literally part of the Trinity living inside of us. Mm. And yet we still sin. Mm -hmm. Right. Me and Vanessa, we just had a fight yesterday. We we sin all the time. I'm not perfect. She's not perfect. This marriage isn't perfect. But guess what? We're working on it. And guess what? God is in the center of it. Yeah. And so every time we fight, we get closer. Every time we have an issue, we get closer. Yeah. And we repent and we move on. And so, yeah, I don't, I don't really understand why people thought that Mary kind of backsliding here was controversial. Yeah. Um, but I definitely saw some of those comments. Yeah, it, it's it, even in Romans, right? Like he does what he doesn't want to, you know, that whole confusing section, but it makes <laughs> total sense because we go through it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's where in Romans is it? I don't know. Dang it. Yep. Jesus prays to the father several times in the Bible, for example, in Gethsemane. I think that's the most compelling thing for me. I think that when Jesus is, is literally asking the father, you know, um, uh, can you take this cup from me? Uh, I think that's the most compelling thing where we see the father and the son as separate person persons. Right. Um, and um, yeah, I just don't know. I, I wish I knew everything. I wish I had more experience um, reading Hebrew and, and, and Greek and Aramaic and all of that. I wish that I was smarter in that area. I'm not, um, but I just have a general kind of idea of, of, of what's going on. And so I want to share that for sure. It's Romans 7. Romans 7. 15 through 20. I do what I don't want to do, and I, I I don't do what I should do. Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry, I'm catching up on the chat. It's it's kind of getting away from me. Uh, Bruce, super chat. thank you so much for the super chat. Says uh, Mark 13, 11, whenever you are arrested and brought to trial. Yeah, we saw your comment earlier. Uh, do not worry beforehand about what to say. Just say whatever is given to you at the time. It is not for you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. 
Yeah, Bruce, I can definitely see that. Um, and I think that I've operated in that in, in, a, in a lot of ways. Even this morning when we were at church, there was a moment when, when I felt like God was asking me to get up and to speak. And so I wasn't worried about what I was going to say. I just knew that the Holy Spirit would say what he needed to say. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I kind of moved on there. Um, yeah. And I believe that Jesus operated in this way a lot, a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I believe that he, he you know, um, operated in this way when he told parables or when he was mm -hmm. dealing with different people or when he automatically knew what the Pharisees were, were thinking, right? Mm -hmm. I think he operated in this way a lot. Um, but I also want to leave room for me not understanding everything. And so the other side of that too is, was that all of the time? Um, so I don't know. Thank you for the super chat, by the way. <laughs> Jesus did tell her to look for Mary, though, so it's interesting. I don't remember this part, M. Um, I don't remember fully. I'll have to rewatch that part. Um, <clears throat> yeah, he sent off uh, Simon and in, 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 in Matthew mm -hmm. to go look for her. Did prophets prepare their speeches? I would say the prophets definitely prepared for some stuff, for sure. Um, I mean, you can imagine the demonstration type things that God had a lot of the prophets do. A lot of these things were practiced day in and day out, and they did them day in and day out. Um, but um, I don't know. It's another one of those things where we just don't have context. So did they ever speak in a in a way that was like in the town square and they 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 said something that was prepared? I mean, I would assume Ab so. Absolutely. Like you can see like in Ezekiel and Jeremiah, mm -hmm. like they're talking to God and then God tells them to say something. Right. So they're preparing, you know, um, for sure. They have to communicate with 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 God. Yeah, this is a good one. I like this one. Guitar guy. Hey, I'm a guitar guy. Guitar guys. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Question. Why didn't the demon leave when Mary prayed? So there's a couple different things that go through my mind when I think about this. I think that she doesn't have the Holy Spirit yet. Right. Jesus has not basically left and the Holy Spirit hasn't come down yet. Like we see in Acts. Um, also, I think she's she's not doing it in Jesus name. Right. She doesn't know how to do any of that. Um, and so she's just trying to talk to the to the guy and get his name. She's trying to do what she, what she's what she saw Jesus doing. Yeah. You know. Sorry, I just need some water real fast. So I think she's just trying to repeat what she saw Jesus do to her, but without authority, it seems like. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> definitely, uh, definitely an interesting scene. We did a whole video on it. So if you guys want to check that out, you can, you can check that out in one of our past videos. Um, but yeah, that scene uh, was intense for sure. Uh, seeing Simon the Zealot jump in was super, super cool. Even Peter had doubts. I brought this up with Dallas. Um, I think so. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, we see Peter as he's not only denying Jesus, right? But before that, whenever Jesus is being arrested, he literally cuts off the ear of this guy. Mm -hmm. We see him again when Jesus literally tells him, get behind me, Satan, <laughs> you know? And then we see him again on the sea of Galilee, right? When Jesus is like, come here, walk with me. And he's like, oh, I can do it. No, I can't. <laughs> and then he falls immediately into the water, right? Uh, yeah, Peter definitely had doubts. And it's going to be interesting to see those scenes um, all together. So Mary didn't have the Holy Spirit yet. Yeah, that's my thought for sure. Um, yeah. Amen. He who is in me is greater than he is in the world. Absolutely. 100%. Let me go back up. Okay, cool. Glad I, glad I could get that for you, guitar guy. Hmm. I disagree with this. Millions of people have lived and never sinned. Um, I just don't think that's true at all. I, I mean, we see this in scripture. None is righteous. No, not one. Right. Um, and so for us, I, I just do not believe that, that millions of people have gone through life without, without sinning. Um, it's not something that I think the Christian church would agree with that at all. Um, and I, I definitely don't. So this is, this is not in my bag. This is one <laughs> I was of those just going to say that. This is one of those things <laughs> that I would, that I would fight about. Well, um, and maybe, maybe you're talking about this. Is this what you're talking about? Born of children inevitably die sinless. Also very small children. Um, yeah, we'd have to talk about this another time. <laughs> definitely not getting into this whole topic uh, tonight for sure. So, awesome. Somebody agrees with us. That's a win. That's a win in my book for sure. <laughs> 
All right, we'll take we'll take a couple more questions, then we'll go into the last thing that we're gonna do tonight, and then we'll get off of here. All right. No, Mary was a sinner like everyone else except Jesus. Yeah, she was 100%. Uh, I think that she struggled just like everybody else did. And uh, it's very plausible, right? And that's that's the one thing, too, that Dallas keeps on saying is that this is not um, to be 100% accurate to Scripture. Um, this is, you know, 95% of all these episodes, right, are not from Scripture. We see little snippets that are directly from Scripture, which is an amazing part, uh, which I love to see. But this is not meant to be a dramatization of scripture. It's meant to be in a historical drama. They liken it more to Game of Thrones and Vikings than they do some of the other biblical shows that we've seen. Mm -hmm. So this is a different type of show. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking to to have everything, um, you know, word for word out of the Bible and then and nothing else, this is not the show for you. And and that's okay. That's totally cool. All Sorry, I'm just looking at all of these. Um, <clears throat> wait, right after the demoniac was banished, Jesus told Raymond to check on Mary. Dallas said not showing it was a mistake. In story, she did it. Oh, okay. Interesting. I'll have to look back at that. Okay. Yeah, same thing. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, I actually have not seen that show at all. I've heard stuff about it, which is why I have not watched it. <laughs> and um, and yeah, I definitely definitely uh, would agree from what I've heard. So not something that I'm interested in watching for sure. What? Uh, Game of Thrones. Oh. Uh, no hate to anybody who has seen it, but just not my cup of tea for sure. All right. Well, I don't see any big other questions. If you guys do have any, just put them in the chat. But um, yeah, so today is a very special day. So there's 236 people on this uh, on this live stream right now. Today is an extremely special day. I want to tell you guys about it. One year ago today, let me restart that. One year ago today, uh, we started our YouTube channel. And so May 30th, 2020, um, we, we started this YouTube channel. And so we just wanted to celebrate live. We got some some Publix cupcakes. If you guys know what Publix is, they have amazing, amazing cupcakes. And uh, it's a supermarket. <laughs> it's a supermarket. <laughs> yeah, it's a food store. Probably won't eat these on stream because um, that's awkward. Oh, that's grody. Yeah, I don't want to like be having like chocolate in my teeth and stuff. Oh. Um, but one I year ago we started this YouTube like channel. A mukbang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll do a, a Christian mukbang at the end of the stream. <laughs> I don't even know what that is, really. It's just when people sit down and eat food. That's all it is. Um, so, uh, <laughs> congrats, congrats. Thank you so much. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Woohoo! Congrats, congrats. <laughs> Congrats, ASMR Cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, too, for the great channel. Yeah, thank you for watching. It's been a huge, huge um, blessing. Uh, it's been an amazing, amazing journey. Um, C. Delaney, thank you so much. <laughs> you definitely don't have to do that. Uh, thank you so much. Durbania, thank you so much. Happy one year. Congratulations. Many blessings in your ministry. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mukbang, Korean for literally eating room. Oh, nice. Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so today is our year anniversary. And let me tell you the story real fast, because I think that so many people have, they don't really have an idea of, of who we are, or where we came from. And so, you know, a year ago, we were during, in the middle of the pandemic, even here in Florida, people were still scared for a few more months at least. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, it, it was this, dream that Vanessa had that she basically just wanted to start a YouTube channel and she wanted it to be kind of a lifestyle channel and kind of hanging out and, um, you know, just doing whatever we wanted to do. And, um, God had different things in mind. <laughs> and so we tried a bunch of different things. You guys can go back. We're not going to delete those videos or unlist them. You guys can go back and watch some of our earlier videos. Some of it is cringy. Um, it's very cringy. <laughs> it's very, very cringy. But here's the thing. Sean Cannell, who is a Christian YouTuber, amazing, amazing guy, um, who, has an amazing YouTube channel called Think Media and a bunch of other YouTube channels, which he's he's kind of grown over the years. He's been on YouTube for over 10 years and um, has a, a massive channel. Basically, he says this, you have to just press record. 
It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter how you do it. You just have to start. And so that's what we did. Our first, first video was done with a cell phone. And then from there, we kept on getting better and better and better about telling stories and doing different things for the, for the first 10 months. Um, we had, um, well, let me back up for our first six months. We didn't even get a hundred subscribers in six months. We're kind of all over the place though. We were kind of all over the place and we just kind of, you know, filmed what we wanted to and, and trying to find what we like to do really. Mm -hmm. Um, and so for the first six months, I think we were at 86 subscribers our, vi that video is actually on our channel. Um, and, um, you know, we, we were nowhere close to monetization or, or to doing anything really, uh, really cool on this channel. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then, you know, two more months pass and we're still sitting around a hundred, hundred subscribers at that point. We were so excited to hit a hundred subscribers. It was amazing at the eight month <laughs> mark. Um, and then two more months mass and we're at 10 months now, almost a year into this journey. And we're sitting at 150 subscribers. And we didn't really know what we wanted to do. <laughs> we, we definitely did not think we would hit a thousand in the first year. Yeah. We, you did. Well, so here's the thing. My goal was to hit a thousand in the first year. And, um, and in the six month video, even though we had 86 subscribers, I said, well, you know, I'd really like to get to a thousand thinking it was an impossible dream, thinking it was something that would never happen. And, um, and then at the 10 month mark, you know, I, I actually rewatched that six month video, that six month update video. And I thought to myself, wow, there's no way, <laughs> there's no way that we're getting to a thousand. I'll have to change, you know, my expectations and maybe in a couple of years, we'll be able to hit a thousand subscribers and, and, you know, we'll just work towards that. We'll still make videos. It's something that we really love to do. Um, but we'll just kind of work towards that. And, um, then within a few weeks of me having that thought, basically we decided that we were going to make one video on the chosen and it was just going to be one video. It wasn't, it wasn't supposed to be a series. It wasn't supposed to be anything. Mm -hmm. Uh, we were just going to make one video. And most of you guys, chosen. yeah. And cause we love the chosen cause we, you know, we had seen it before and episode episode one of season two was coming out. And so we were really hyped about it. And, um, you know, we watched the episode, we really loved the episode. And then the next day I was like, man, maybe we should make a video about that. <laughs> and, um, and so I ended up making a video about it when Vanessa was working and, um, yeah, the video went crazy. I mean, <laughs> it started blowing up and we started getting subscribers and literally I, we got seven subscribers in a week and I freaked out. <laughs> yeah like i literally told all of our friends i was like this is amazing like like we have to do another chosen video because we got seven subscribers <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, know yeah. and like i was so ecstatic i was so happy that that the people actually wanted to watch this video you know and people were excited about our community and then you know that video started doing you know 100 views and then 200 views, and then 300 views, and then 1,000 views, and then 2,000 views, and it quickly became our most viewed video ever. Yeah. And and all of a sudden, it was at 10,000 views, and then 20,000 views, <laughs> and I was like, what is happening? I've never seen one of our videos ever get even close to this. It was insane. And so we kept on making chosen videos, and now you know we've decided that this channel is going to be a dedicated chosen channel because what we wanted to do before was talk about creativity, we wanted to talk about cinematography. We wanted to talk about story business. and we wanted to talk about business and guess what we can do with the chosen. We can talk about the amazing, amazing cinematography that the chosen has. We can talk about the amazing story that the chosen has. We can talk about the amazing creativity that the chosen has. We can talk about the business model of the chosen, which we're doing a video on coming up probably in a few months. And then on top of that, we get monetized on YouTube. We get to talk to an amazing community and we get to make money talking about Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> How insane is that? That's awesome. How insane is that? Mm. God has blessed us tremendously. And so we just wanted to take this moment to, uh, to just shout it out with you guys and, uh, and to hang out with you guys. And the last question that I have for you is, you know, as we get this channel kind of set in, in what we're doing, would any of you be interested in me doing a second channel, not talking about the chosen necessarily, but talking about YouTube in general? Would you like me to do guides on, you know, how to get views and subscribers? Would you like me to talk about our experience in growing our channel and kind of some things that we found that worked and some things that we found that didn't work? Would you guys be interested in something like that? And, um, you know, let us know what you want to see. Eventually, this is my goal is to, to help others do what we're doing here. Because we want other Christian channels to, to succeed. Mm -hmm. We want other people to come and, and to be amazing, amazing creators for Christ, right? Mm -hmm. And not necessarily creating Christian content all the time. Maybe they're doing, you know, maybe they're doing cooking channels. Maybe they're doing lifestyle vlogs. Maybe they're talking about mom stuff, right? But the fact that Christians are doing it makes a huge difference. 
and it changes the way that media is consumed, right? It changes the people who are kind of in charge of that. And so I would love to see more people um, do that. So. I want to show this uh, super or whatever it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus could have preached in the moment, but in the Sermon on the Mount was his core message and long so prepared. So he prepared. Oh, Matthew used for his gospel later. Yeah. yeah, we don't really know, Sue, but that's definitely, I would say that that's a possibility. Yeah, 100%. And thank you for the super chat. Yeah, absolutely. Thank <laughs> you so much. Love you guys. Vanessa, we've seen you a lot in the chat. Thank you so much for being here, for being willing to be a returning viewer and, and to be a part. And I just absolutely um, love your name, so. <laughs> <laughs> Vanessa's maiden name is Vanessa Cotto. Um, and Koto. so, Cotto. <laughs> <laughs> and so her name actually was Vanessa C, but not C I, but C. Um, yeah, nothing is impossible for God. Um, yeah, man, I wish I could be happy as all. You can. It's easy. You just be happy. If you need us to be there for you, we'll we'll, we'll hang out with you, joke with you, whatever you need us to do. <laughs> Thank you for your kindness and sharing this time. It's joyful and comforting. Wonderful. God is taking you forward. Lots more to come. You guys are so fun to listen to. This Thanks. is anointed. Yes, sir. -y. Thank you so much, Jules. You rock. Uh, awesome. Awesome. Seeing the same names over again. I think that's our favorite part is just yes. having this community. Susan's feathers. We've seen you too. Mm -hmm. um, you can share your love of Jesus. How wonderful. Yes. See Delaney. Obviously you've been a rock star tonight. <laughs> see, um, I thank you so much for all that you're doing. Yes. Yeah. You didn't do that many um, reintroducing the channel in this one. Oh, uh, real quick. Well, let me let me have you guys do this. So let me explain something to you about, about how YouTube works. So YouTube works this way. If you like the video, YouTube will send this video out to at least one other person like you. So if you like the video, YouTube has the potential to release this to many other people and let them see this video. If you don't like the video, it won't pass it along. And so what I want you guys to do is we have 231 people in here. Please, everyone go and like the video. What this will do is it'll send it to 231 more people. And then those 231 people will like the video. And then it'll send 231 more people. Let's try to get this video as viewed as possible so that not so that like we're like lifted up, but so that channels like ours can be you know loved on like channels like Durbania if you guys want to go subscribe to him he does chosen content as well and other movie content um some cool cool stuff over there <clears throat> but if you don't like the videos and subscribe and do all that stuff basically our channel will not continue to grow it'll just stay stagnant and so what I'm asking you to do is as our community as the people that love us and want us to, to succeed um you know let's grow this together Let's do this together. If you like the video, it'll be passed along. So that will really, really help us out. Yeah, it is amazing, Dervania, for sure. It's amazing to see how God opens doors and does the unexpected. Absolutely. I never would have guessed that we would be where we are. Um, pray for the Chosen. They are up for an award with Caleb. Yeah, I've heard about that for sure. I hope you guys voted for them. Uh, amazing, amazing She stuff. said it's tonight. I didn't know it was tonight. I thought it was Friday. I don't actually know. I don't know. We've been very busy lately. We're actually preparing to leave next week. We will still have some videos up for you um, that are going to be scheduled, but we're going to leave next week uh, to go to Kentucky uh, to a camp called Big Creek, where they they basically serve missions um, in the Kentucky area uh, to one of the one of the poorest locations in the world or in in the United States. Um, yeah. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you guys. Just joining now. Well, Thank you so much. All right, I want to eat my cupcake, dude. Uh, okay. Well, and in just a second, it's tonight. TBN. Okay, everybody, go watch that. Yeah. Go do that. <laughs> Praise God for the awesomeness uh, that is on its way. Yeah, I'm so so excited for for everything for the chosen for us uh, for all of it. So, um, yeah. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, I think that's it for us. You done? <laughs> Love you guys so much. Make sure you share this video, like it, subscribe, and um, yeah. We love you all. We, seriously. <laughs> yeah, seriously. It's we been an insane journey. We couldn't do this without journey. you, obviously. Yeah. And and just the fact that we get to talk to people, that we get to meet you guys for real. And have like, conversation. Like, yeah. this was an awesome conversation that we had today. Yeah. And I think this is why we like doing live streams so much is because it, it changes um, – it changes the way that we talk to you because we get to talk to you live and actually have a conversation instead of it being so kind of 
one directional and also kind of you know cut it and edited and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So love you guys. Thank you so much. Any any recommendations for Margaret, y'all, as we get out of here? <laughs> all right. I think that's it for Fire us. We're gonna proof. play our outro. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. So thank you so much for being part of our community. You guys are amazing. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful night. Have an amazing Sunday. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for being part of our community. Peace. Peace.